All right, in this demonstration, I'm going to show you how you can take your local host environment and import it up to or migrate it up to another server. So um, one of the things that we have to deal with is if we go on our local host, let's just say that I'm working on a project. This is called Project 2. And it's on my local host environment. And, you know, this isn't complete, but let's say that I just want to go ahead and make sure that I can get it up onto uh, the server without any trouble, uh, especially like before due dates or, you know, whatever. But you just want to make sure that you can migrate it. So I've got a contact form, I've got a features page, I'm using some widgets. It's not complete, but, you know, it's working. And so if I wanted to go, you know, I could look at this and so on. Okay, now the, the thing is, is with WordPress, if you have something on two live servers, let's say you've got uh, your development um, uh, installation on one server that's a live word, world visible server, and you want to migrate it to another one, there's a much easier way of doing this. But the problem is whenever you're going from localhost, uh, you can't use the native import tools that are built right into WordPress. You have to do it sort of an old fashioned way, um, and that's really the safest way of doing it. There's some other ways you could, uh, you know, do it besides this, but um, I actually find that this is the easiest way uh, to avoid all sorts of problems later. So what I want to do first is I want to go ahead and transfer my files up to the server. So remember we have two parts. We have the files in the file system, you know, with the WordPress folder that has like the theme and the plugins and all that stuff. And then we also have the database. Well, because the files take so long to transfer up to the server, we should go ahead and take a look at that first. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is go to my uh, htdocs folder. And I have my project two folder right here. I'm just gonna look inside of it really fast. And I wanna show you something. So, okay, so what we have is if we're looking inside my project two folder, what's important whenever you're transferring files up to the server is to make a decision as to whether or not you're going to do a complete overwrite of what's already on the server or if you're going to only transfer up some files. Now, let me go ahead and be clear about some different options that you have right now. First thing is that if you have nothing on the server, if you haven't even attempted to put in a server installation up yet, then you're going to just transfer everything. You're going to take this entire Project 2 folder right here, and you're going to put that whole thing up on the server. Okay, that's the first thing. If you already have something on the server, though, let's say that you put like a, a test installation up there, but you haven't really been fooling around with it very much, um, you know, and, and you've been working primarily on your local host environment, there are some really important things to, to be aware of. One is that if you know since the time you uploaded, um, since the time you uploaded your stuff on the server, if you know that on your local host you did a lot of updates to um, your core set of files, you might consider overwriting everything anyway. Because there are some changes uh, that happen in the database sometimes whenever the core set of files get up updated as well as the actual files themselves. And so if, you know, if you've got an older version on WordPress, or excuse me, if you have an older version of WordPress on the server and you're only, you know, updating some of the files, then you might end up running into some problems. Um, WordPress is really pretty good about warning you and saying, hey, you know, because it recognizes that there's something new in the database that, you know, it doesn't know how to deal with. It might say, hey, you need to upgrade. You know, you've got something that, that's not quite right. But sometimes it won't work. And so that's just something else that you need to be aware of. But if you know that, you know, you haven't really had any big updates or anything like that, and you don't want to take the time to upload the entire folder because it is time consuming. And, you know, the other thing, too, is that when you upload the whole folder, there's a very good chance that some of your files may become corrupt in the file transfer. It just happens. And, you know, several of you probably already have dealt with that, where you have to, you know, go and find a file that's messed up and replace it with a good version. So if you want to avoid all of that, let me show you the things that you really need 
to upload first. And this is going to be the first of many steps of migrating your stuff. So the first thing is you definitely need this content that's in WP content. Um, now, one thing I will make note of, if I look inside of my WP content folder, you'll see that I have, you know, index, plugins, themes, and uploads. Some of you might, if you've used other specialty plugins, like I think NextGen Gallery, for instance, it creates a folder inside of WP content called Galleries. You would have to have that as well. But one thing that I will note that's important is that if, if you already have stuff on the server already, all right, and you, you already have the 2014, 13, and 12 themes, or even worse, like, or even better, I should say, you don't even care about 2012 and 2013, then you might not want to take the time to upload those. So if you don't want to just drag this whole folder over, one of the things that you can do is you can make sure that whenever you're copying stuff, let's go to FileZilla and I'll show you what I'm talking about. <clears throat> so like here on the left is my Project 2 folder. You can see I'm in it right now. I'm in my ZAMP. All right, and then on the right, I'm in my student 18. I'm using student 18 as the example. And then if I go to my project two folder on that server, I, this is an example of where I already have some files up on the server. All right, um, so if I go into my WP content on this side, and then over here, I do the same thing. You know, I could drag my plugins over, I could drag in my uploads and just overwrite those completely. But themes, maybe to save some time uh, and some, some hassle, is that if nothing, if you know that the 2014, 13, and 12 themes are all the same, and heck, maybe you're not even using them, maybe just drag over your custom theme and it saves you a ton of time um, so that you don't have to wait for all this other stuff to upload. Okay, so that's just one thing to note. Let's go back up to the top level of our WordPress folder. All right, now the other thing that's going to be important, and I'll just show you from here, the other thing that's going to be really important to make sure you get is the WP, where is it, WP um, config file. Now, here's the thing. If you already have a server installation, you know, that's, that's good to go, um, you chances are it probably is already connecting to your database. So maybe you don't need to upload your WP config file. However, all right, this is really important, is you have to make sure that whatever um, uh, table prefix you're using in your local host version, it has to also match the table prefix that you're using in your uh, server version. So it's really up to you whether or not, you know, you need to upload that. but What's important is that the, the server version of your WP config file has to have the server's database connection credentials to work, and the one on your local host is going to have separate database connection credentials in order for it to work. But what's really important is both of them should have the same uh, prefix uh, folder, or excuse me, prefix name. So like P2 underscore uh, for project two, for instance, um, if that's what I have on localhost, then that's what I also need to have here because I'm remember I'm going to put this entire installation that's on localhost. I'm going to be getting the database up there too and importing it. And if all of my tables are prefixed with P2, then I need to make sure this WP config file knows to look for those tables. Otherwise, it won't work. Okay. So. Like I said, if, if any of this seems just a little bit too overwhelming and confusing, you know, you can always go and take your entire Project 2 folder um, in your htdocs. Here, let's, in fact, let's just do that, show you that view. Okay, and then if I go up to my root here, again, like I said, you could just take this and drag it over. All right, it's just going to take a lot longer to do. So those are the files that you need to transfer. And then um, the other thing, too, that's important, let's go back into Project 2. And you're going to notice something that you're not going to see in your file system here if you're on a Mac. If you're on Windows, you may or may not see it, uh, depending on whether or not you have, um, <clears throat> have it enabled in your Explorer windows. 
to uh, see hidden files. But on a Mac, you can't see hidden files. You're not supposed to be able to. Um, and so what, what's missing from this view in my Finder window is a, a file called htaccess that's hidden. So it starts with a dot. But if you were to look in FileZilla, you'll see that it, it's there. FileZilla will see hidden files, thank, thank goodness. All right, it makes it a lot easier on a Mac, right? So uh, it's really, really important that you also copy your htaccess file over if you have one. Now, here's what's really important about htaccess is that you might not even have one, if you didn't change your permalink structure, if you're just using the default permalink uh, to get your web addresses, then it may not have created um, an htaccess file that's hidden, and that's fine. But if you're using, uh, well, actually, you know, it, it's not fine completely because whenever you use something like Yoast for search engine optimization, it's going to require that you change your permalink, so it's going to require that you have a, a special HT access file. But if you haven't done that on localhost yet and you don't have that file created and you're just sort of transferring stuff so that you can work on the server, um, then don't worry about it. But make sure that if you do have it that you do transfer it. Now what's in that file um, and why is it so important? The reason it's important is that it helps you with your rewrite rules so that it can take an ugly weird long um, URL and make it into something prettier and more search engine friendly and people friendly. And what the contents of that is, I'm going to right click this on the left side here on my local and I'm going to say edit. Okay, and it's telling me that it's already being edited. It's because I had it open a minute ago. It's also telling me the file's locked. That's okay. I'm just going to view it for now. But if you needed to, you know, save a copy of it to change it, you could save a copy this way doing file save as, okay? Now, the thing that's important is when you look at this, it's gonna look like mumbo jumbo to you probably if you don't know regular expressions, and most of us are not good with re regular expressions, uh, admittedly so, even if you know them. So um, they're pretty complicated. But one of the things that this is doing is it's telling us what our rewrite base is, and it's that project two folder. It's also telling us um, about, basically it's, it's requiring that, that this is the, the trigger for index.php and how it's gonna be rewritten. Um, and then it also lists that, that project two folder here again. What's important about this is that it's assuming that this first forward slash is the root level of your web service. Um, the thing is if you change this project two name, once you get the files up on the server, you're going to have to change it in your HT access file that's on the server as well. Um, otherwise, your links aren't going to work properly. So I'm just kind of giving you this as a heads up that this HT access file can't possibly be one of the reasons whenever you migrate, if your uh, links aren't working, it possibly is partially responsible for that. If either you don't have it or the pathway is different because you changed the pathway or whatever. Okay, so anyway, I'm just going to go ahead and close this. I don't need that. Um, and I just wanted to show you that. So it's important that you get your HT access file over into that as well. And again, I'll go back and I'll say it one more time. If all of this is a little bit more overwhelming than you care for it to be, you can always go and you can just take the entire folder and you can move the entire fo folder over and then you won't have to worry about it getting your WP config and your HD access, right? It just might give you a corrupt file during file transfer that you have to fix later.